Happy New Year, all. Yeah. Is it, is it, yeah, it is. Is it? No, it's our second. This is our second. This is our second, second meeting. So yes. So, uh, it's, it's old, old news now. So Mr. anyway, Pierce. just, just uh, yes. Well, never mind. Go ahead. I'll okay. Well, well just, uh, just so everybody will know, this uh, meeting is uh, to state that this meeting is being recorded tonight. So I have to say that every time. So. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, just a quick, everybody get a chance to read through everything that we had in the, you know, because there's a couple of questions we want to deal with today, tonight. Uh, you know, I want to make sure everybody's uh, read everything and on the same page. So um, if you would, if you would, please, Chris, I would like to just dispense with the two sets of minutes right off first. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Mr. Pierce, I move that we accept the minutes of Tuesday, December 21st, 2021, as written. Second. Okay, I have a motion uh, by Ms. Davis, second by Mr. Rudloff. And so I will do a, uh, uh, a vote by person. Jeremiah, how say you? Aye. David? Aye. And Chris? Aye. And I am aye also. So that means four in favor, no opposed. Mr. Carroll's not with us this evening. If you would please, Mr. Hayden. Mr. Pierce, I move that we accept the minutes of January 4th, 2022, as written. Second. The second? Okay, second by Mr. Rudloff. Um, any changes or corrections? All in favor? Well, let's see, no, actually, I got a roll call this. Uh, Jeremiah? Aye. And David? Aye. Christopher? Aye. And on myself is aye. That's four in favor and no opposed. Um, I take care I'm of our minutes. I'm sorry, who, who's second on the um, first set of minutes? David, I did David. on both. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we have um, obviously the Crestview Estates that we got at, what do we got them on for eight o'clock here? Yes. So, um, all right, so um, um, the only other thing we really have on here is this ADU bylaw. So I think the first thing we need to do with this, we should, we should talk about a little bit, we can interrupt it to take care of the, uh, the uh, Crestview and talk about why we're, we're, we're extending that again. Uh, um, but for the ADU bylaw, I guess our, our first thing that we need to do is to decide what uh, what our intention here is, because it appears that we got some cross intentions here. And now, initially, we, we we looked at this for a, a number of times in the past. Actually, over the past few years, we've talked about this ADU bylaw, and the, but then recently, which is in the last six months or so, Jerry started bringing us stuff because he was having issues with with the uh, having people putting these uh, things in, and and he, he was looking for something with a little more. With either some, uh, you know, some some by right situation or some set of rules, something he could hang his hat on to get some some kind of control over what was happening. So while everybody thinks that there are cross intentions here, we actually both of them were going on simultaneously. Although trying to provide additional housing, which you know, which was our original intent way in the way back when we first started it, including some research into what they did in California and some other things. Um, uh, was our original intention. So, so the question before us right now is, what are we? What are we trying to do here? What is? It, are we trying to provide Jerry with the bylaw that gives him something to hang his hat on to do these, uh, or are we trying to provide uh, housing, or, or what are we? What are we trying to do? What's everybody's take on that? Does anybody have any comments on that? Because I, I, I oh. you know, I mean, go ahead, Chris. Um, I, I, you know. Providing some low cost housing for people who need it, which would be, you know, the pa parents of, of um, residents of town or the, the children moving back and the parents moving into, you know, something small on the property that that was always that's always a good thing for me and helping Jerry out. I, li I like not just one, but both things. But I think a bylaw can can. Um, can do both things. We just have to craft it properly, and right. and I think we're we've we've worked well into that, and you know I think we just need to continue and continue on. I I I think we were we were in the right thing. I mean, 
I, I had a two family house on this street when I moved in, it was converted to a back to a single family house. Um, I wasn't too happy about the two family house because, you know, it was two different families, but having a family that's, that's together, you know, as much as you can, at some point you'll lose, you lose control of that, but you know, you, you, you try not to. And I think a good way in, you know, reading uh, the stuff that Danielle and Jerry were talking about, a single meter on the house helps with that because, you know, that, that, that means that the, the home is paying for all the utilities. Um, you know, it's not being spread between, you know, if, if I'm in the, the, the basement apartment, I pay for my utilities and the guys upstairs pay for their utilities. No, it's the other way around. In this situation, the main house is paying for the utilities for the, uh, the um, ADU. So I, I, I really, that, that I think is a really good way to help keep it as an ADU. Well, I, I agree that we, um, you know, that we, that we need to probably combine these two things. Um, but uh, again, that, that that brings up some very specific problems as to as, as for example, whether we're going to limit it to family and, and so forth, which which we have done in the, in that in that bylaw. Um, we have to accept the fact that once the once the barn door is opened, you're not going to close it again, and that the family that's in there now that brings in the the in laws or the outlaws for the uh, for the period of um, for the period of time that they all live there, when they all move out, the next people that move in could, in fact, um, bring in an unrelated person, and there's really no way to control that or to uh, to police that. It's just it's just something that's going to happen. So I think that when we took the Reading by law and we cut it down, and we we and we sort of we with Danielle's help crafted the the bylaw that we have, which is somewhat restrictive. Um, I think we kind of uh, tried to um, curb a little bit of that uh, as best we could. And, and again, I, you know, it's never gonna be perfect. You're gonna have to accept that and work your way through it. So uh, um, I, I think that that what we have, unless somebody has some, some specific reason, uh, what we have started here is probably what we're gonna have to what we're going to live with. So, Dave, you got any? You got some comments on that? I know you had some concerns. Yeah, I mean, I reached out to Jerry because what I was a little frustrated with on the last meeting was I did think that was a lot of our intent to on this bylaw is to help help him out. And Jerry, you know, is a, a couple times indicated, you know, or used the the, the same um, point about the there's no there's nothing that limits people in the amount of kitchens that they can put into their, to their home. So, and when I reached out to him earlier in the week and then uh, last Friday, he replied to me, you know, he stated the exact same thing again. And, um, and was kind of, uh, again, questioning like why I'm asking for some direction, but I feel like in, in reading the minutes from last, the last meeting or the, uh, the meeting we had, Ryan said the exact same thing. So you have two people on the elected CPC that had a meeting with a public meeting with the building inspector and heard something, a message, the message we received from him is that he was looking for help from us. So yes. in the email I got on Friday, didn't he seem to be kind of didn't remember any of that. But anyways, <laughs> uh, I'll, you know, that said, you know, addressing Danielle's um, you know, memo, I think, you know, it's good that we have this discussion about, you know, what's the purpose, but I do think, you know, Danielle, you know, in, in fairness to you, but you, you kind of put it in binary terms. It's like, you have some members that want to provide um, this additional yeah. housing, you know, means, and then you have some that don't. And, uh, you know, specifically, since it's all a record, Mr. Carroll and, and myself, you know, were more critical of this and, and took the side more of we, or the approach that we we're coming from to support the building inspector, but I don't think it's binary. I just think that in all these decisions, you know, whether we're allowing it or even Jerry having to deal with it, you know, one of the main purposes that you even state your second sentence in there is to kind of 
um, you know, to ensure that the single family, you know, quality of the neighborhood is, is, is remains intact. And I think that's what I'm coming at. It's not to be restrictive. It's just saying that we need to be the voice of the other people. Um, and I, I, keep, I come back to the survey again, 211 people picked ADUs of the 499 that filled out that survey in 2018. So 211 people want it but there's 15,000 residents in town here and I'm just trying to be balanced here and think about what they would want and have their neighborhood remain yeah. to appear at least as a single family neighborhood. And I do think it can be done with apartments, but I don't think this draft, which leaves the door open for detached and is not very, it needs a lot of work, okay. I think, to make okay. sure. Okay, well, first of all, okay, okay I, Dave, I don't, first of all, um, we go, uh, well, Chris and I go, go back years working on ADUs, so, so it, this is not a new thing, and it's not just new with Jerry, okay? This is something that we've been, been talking about trying to put together for a long, long time, so, so um, trying to help Jerry out with, with something, but he, his, his position is he'd like to see it just as a right. He doesn't even want to see it be something that we have to have a special well, permit. You bring, up a good, you bring up a good point is, again, about the purpose. So the first question Daniel asks, and then Jerry's been answering it, do we even need to do this? Because what it sounds like is that we don't, there's nothing we can do to stop people from putting multiple kitchens into okay. their house. And well, first of well, all, let me just finish. Well, let me okay. just finish. And if so, if they can do that, but in order to do that, they need to pull a permit with our building inspector. So the building inspector then is, unless they want to do it illegally at their own risk, but the building inspector is then aware of every house that has multiple kitchens if they've added them in his tenure. You know, prior before, probably not. But at least while well, Jerry's been here, he's very strict, does a great job. So I'm sure he knows about them. So if there's no restrictions there, there's no restrictions two of putting two meters on a house, I believe. There's no restrictions on any of this stuff. So why are we drafting a bylaw in the first place if there's if we can't even restrict? Like, well, you can't restrict and say, I just want family members. Like, they can have anyone they want in that house. You show me where in the bylaw right now, it says you can't have a non-family member, a caregiver staying at home. Where does it say that in any of our bylaws? Where is it against the law for that? So how is drafting this bylaw going to change any of this stuff that Jerry clearly says we can't control? Well, I think that if we put it in there, um, then at least it gives him something to hang his hat on, which is kind of what he was looking for. But, but, um, but, but I mean, I understand your point, but we have to do, we have to start somewhere. And so we, you have to back all the way up and, and ask the question why, if we've talked about it so much in the past, why haven't we done anything with it until now? I don't know well, if you ever I'll, I'll tell you what it is. What it is, is you need to put together a bylaw that you can sell. Because if you can't sell it, I don't care if 10,000 people voted in favor of it in that particular uh, survey or chose it as their thing. If it doesn't pass muster at town meeting, it's not happening. So, right, but I just, so, just, so I just of, feel Warren. You know, 211 to 499, you know, issue is really not such a, you know, isn't it, 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 it's a, maybe a valuable piece of information, but in the end, it's not going to be germane because what's going to really decide whether this actually happens or not is can we craft a bylaw that is palatable to the people in town altogether as a voting block? But it's a suggestion, right? It's not actually got any teeth. What the which? The well, I mean, one? every point, every every point in this draft. If I guess you could put the litmus test to every point, and these are, you know, these are in the Massachusetts ones. I'm not saying Danielle's not, you know, Danielle's just putting it down here. But are any of these enforceable? You know what I mean, in the sense of like if the the meter example. Um, they well, I think ways. in the very beginning, in the very beginning, we talked about this exact issue, Dave. And the thing that that the, the most important thing that we brought up was that if we make the law palatable, if we make it acceptable to the people, they will pull their permits. If they pull their permits, then we know where the, these are. We know who has them and where they are, as opposed to having them come in in the darkness of night 
And I think that having all the knowledge about, for especially for the fire department to go and know that there's an ADU here. So just because you got the people out of the main house doesn't mean you didn't leave somebody. And so I think we, we understood right from the beginning that a good part of this whole bylaw was allowing the building inspector and the fire department to collect the data they need to, to provide safe safety for the for the people in the in the town. I think that was right from the get go. I agree. I agree. Point. Yeah. Okay, so that, that so, the, so the idea was not to put a blockade in the way to keep people from pulling their permits. That was the key thing that we were trying to do. So, so Jerry's idea, the reason he wants it as a right is because then they'll pull their permit. They, he'll come and say, yeah, no big deal. You just pull your permit and we'll do it. And then we'll have some control over it, which we have none right now. You're right about that. You have no control over it now. This would give us some level of control because we'd actually- Well, he knows their ADUs, you know. <laughs> He knows so, the rate so, you use. Um, so would, he can't would you stop agree that. that that's a that's not a bad starting point right there is to get some kind of control over it to make it possible for people to pull their permits without fear, if you will? Well, I, again, but you can't have it both ways. You can't and then have the draft have the provision for a special permit for detached ADUs. You know, we it's don't in want here again. We, we don't want detached. Well, then why is it in here again? You know, I thought I'm sorry, can clear. I just explain? I, yeah. I tried hard to scrub all references to detached in, and I realized I, I hadn't done, I missed one in the last draft and Jerry caught it, which is why I, I struck it in the draft that he reviewed. So that, yeah, all references should be gone because I know everyone agreed to that. Okay, because so, it's so in multiple, they, it's not just one line, it's in multiple lines. Yeah, we don't want, we don't, we, we, we are, right now we don't want to, because I know that right now trying to sell the detached I'm pretty sure it would not pass muster if we allow detached. It would, it would, the town would say no, that you're going to create, um, what you're going to create is multifamily housing on lots and it's, it's not going to work. And, but I think that there's enough, there'd be some level of empathy for people who are trying to have a, a loved one or, a, or an in law or, or a survivor. Yeah, 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 there's a lot of empathy for that. I just, yep. you know, I just, uh, so that's it's, so it's, so okay. So what we're trying to well, let's put some points down on the board here about what it is that we uh, that we're that we're in agreement on, and so we're in agreement on on the fact that making this uh, a, as simple of a permitting process as possible to encourage people to let us know what's going on. That's number one. The second one would be trying to uh, at least put in the request to the you know put in you know make it a requirement if you want that, that it be a family member that be there so that we have. We provide the ability for a family unit to stay together. Whether that carries forward in the future, you know as well as I do. That's you know, there's no police for that. There's no way to uh, to uh, to prevent that from happening. So somebody's got to open mic someplace. So we're getting a lot of feedback there. So um, so anyway, um, um, so those two things. Do you agree? But those are two things that we should that we should uh, move forward on. I'm trying to find some consensus here so that we can decide what we're going to do with the, with the bylaw. So do you agree with those things, Dave? I mean, yeah, I'm just to, to some degree, I just feel like, uh, yeah, I mean, we just, we definitely have work to do on this bylaw because it just very, it, it contradicts in a lot of, it says, or in the memo, it says that the the uh, the special permit granting authority will be, or Jerry recommends, if it's going to be, you know, an SGPA, it would be it would be uh, the planning board, us. Yeah. But then in the in the draft here, it, it kind of lists just e either ZBA or us. So I'm not sure how the commission well, I mean, those feels are about all, those that. Those are all yeah. Those are all points that we can just that we can pick at that that are that are not that, that those don't affect the bylaw. Those are you know as far as the approving authority goes well, with for me, they're important because you know for me they're important because there's a lot of things here like i mentioned with the detached that i'm dead set against so for when you ask like can i get on board what am i getting bored on what getting on board with then well so, that's what i tried to do the first couple points initially are you on board with with uh you know with 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 having a, a family member there are you on board with letting making it the permit yeah, again easy so i hate to go in circles what's going out there i hate to go in circles but again what is what what right now in either the massachusetts general law or north reading zoning bylaws 
Is there preventing someone from having a family member living under their roof or a caregiver live under the roof or even rent for that matter? But, you know, I mean, I just say that in jest, but I mean, the first two, for example, is there anything limiting someone from doing that? Well, I think Jerry's made it abundantly clear that he's looking at these all the time. So, the, but the problem is they fail to properly permit them because they because we don't allow them. So, by making the, the, it, it, it a quote unquote allowed use with with conditions means that people will properly permit them. And I, I don't want to go in circles either. But that proper permitting provides a lot of information, a lot of safety information to the town. And I think to not do that is means that we're going to continue to have them say, "Well, is there anybody in there? Nobody knows." Because we've made it hard, too hard for them to do this, and yet they're doing it anyway. So, so shouldn't we? I, I mean, I think the whole idea behind this um, accessory doing, dwelling unit thing initially was to provide um, for uh, a, you know a surviving spouse, a parent, or whatever, and and uh, and to in an affordable manner, you know, because otherwise, that we're kicking them out of town. I think that was one of the prevailing things in the very beginning when we first started. I mean, I'm talking years ago. So right. now we're at the point where we're trying to craft a bylaw and where, where uh, you know, I don't think we can, um, um, I mean, I, I don't, don't think there's anything you, in there right now that's stopping and an well, elder person. Well, I would refer you to the Reading bylaw. What is the Reading bylaw to, to prevent any of this from happening? Probably the Reading bylaw, that we did, and, and they allow detached too. So, what's in that bylaw? That that that. Who are the police? I didn't read it. I read through that whole bylaw a couple of times. I didn't see any police. So, uh, so, so again, huh? I said there weren't any. Yes. So, so, again, the idea behind crafting a bylaw is to try to get. Try to get people to do to permit the, everything, all the work that they do, and to at the same time make it possible for people to, ex, you know, to have the option of of having a, a, a an in law apartment or, if you will, an ADU where we could where they can have a family member, and we can ask that it be a family member. I, I think they do in the Reading bylaw, but they don't. But they don't. Can, there's no nobody policing that, and there never will be. So why why make it a problem? Put it in there as, a, as something that we'd like to see and move forward. The initial person will have to show some level of proof that they, you know, if if we don't make it as of right, do we make it as of right with uh, with conditions? You know, so how would you do the law? How would you draw the law? Do you have any? Uh, do you have uh, any uh, ideas yourself? There's, there's four other members of this commission. I don't know why this is all about what I what I. Think. Well, because because you've been very you you've been uh, you've been thinking about this and you've been working on it in your head and you have obviously care a lot about it and so. I I, so I, I, I want to hear from you. About it, but I care a lot about it, but all I hear ever is about the 211 people and not the rest of the 15,000. So hey, that's, you I know what, what, David? David, yeah. I haven't thought about the 211 people out of the 400 and whatever number since yes. two years ago or more. Yeah, yeah, I don't. It, either. That's not what I. That's not what I think about because that is not a real good survey of this town. It's fifteen yeah, thousand people. Really mean that's not one hundred percent. Well, so that never didn't mean anything to it because we've been working on this before that survey was even done. That's, we, that's uh, right. Right. That, that, that. And so that's, that's the point. Forget about that survey. We don't care about that survey, really. I mean, I, and, and I'm well, not holding uh, it up. And for, I don't me, think for, me, and, for, you know, for me, it's the only metrics I have where the direct question is asked okay. to the residents of the town. We spend a lot of money on surveys, studies, engineers, yeah. all this stuff. That was one piece of information, probably the last one. It's only two, three years old that we have. So I apologize for referencing it, but that's well. I, I think the problem the with that. Uh, I think the problem with it, Dave, is that it, is that that didn't that, that particular bad, question yeah. did not eliminate. It did not eliminate the the, the uh, possibility of detached. Now, if you had eliminated detached to something from it, and you had that number, that might be different. 
but but it didn't. So that's why we can't really do that because I don't think we're interested. Yeah, it's in also that. it's multiple choice. You get to pick more than one. I mean, it's yeah, a very yeah, yeah. washy yeah. survey. But so well, our goal I, I right my, now, our goal right now is to try to, and and I'd love to hear from everybody else. But our goal right now is to try to craft some kind of a bylaw that encourages the legal the, the legal <laughs> development of an ADU, so that we have all the information we should have for it. And to try to limit it to family because it, that's it'll be more palatable at the at the at the town meeting when we have to vote on this. I mean, you know, so, so our our job is to come up with an with an ADU bylaw that is usable and realistic, and 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 that people will follow the rules on, and at the same time make it palatable, so or else because if it doesn't pass town meeting, you wasted your time. So I'd like some input on that. I mean, I have some ideas myself, but I'd like some input from the board as to how to, what they think would, would work for that. I think what Danielle did uh, to this point is, has, and she says right in it that there's, this is there's just a bunch of stuff all thrown together so that we can pick through and sort out what we don't want and keep what we do. If, if I'm correct with Danielle, you, we left a little bit of everything in there, so we had different things to pick at in the in the in the in the draft that you did. I did try to eliminate everything that I thought there was a consensus that we didn't want in there, and I tried to add what I thought I heard at the last meeting we would want added. Um, I'm still not sure if it's representative of of enough of the members. I think what I was trying to say in my memo is that. Um, that the, you know, the comments that we heard at the last meeting were really at opposite ends of the spectrum to some degree. So I just wanted to make sure that we had a discussion kind of like the one that we're having so that we know um, just, just a little bit about, you know, why we want to approach this so that we know what to put in the bylaw if there is Well, we can put a couple of things to bed right off. We don't want detached, okay? Does anybody yeah, have I, an issue with that? No detached. Is that okay with everybody? I had it's missed okay, one right. reference, but we had decided that a while ago. And I okay, there was okay. one well, reference well, left and I told it got brought up because it got it got it crept back in. Okay, so so we know that's what something that we don't. Want. That's one of the bad things about a Zoom meeting because if we could have a if we were if we were in a live meeting, we could take a board and just write these things down, then add them and cross them up, and, and then come up with a bunch of stuff that 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 we could put together that we you know a bunch of different you know items that we all agree on. So um, um, so so we all agree that we don't want detached. Do we, uh, so do we, do we, um, so let me ask this question and I'll just, I'll, I'll just roll call this because I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I need answers from you guys if, before we can craft anything. And the question is going, going to be, do we want this to be uh, by special permit or by right? Chris. I like the special permit because we can review everything. Make, make it sure that they're adding a bedroom that can be sustained supported by a septic system there's the common wall which could be a floor yeah. wall doesn't mean it has to be a vertical it could be a it could be a horizontal if i'm not mistaken correct daniel yeah uh, it just has to be that it has to be some you have to be able to be common within the same building that makes mm -hmm. it in the building not detached and you know there has to be some separation between them because i've got grown children living with me here they live in their bedroom. They don't, they can go use the kitchen. They can come in the living room if they want, but they want to be in their own space. They're in their bedrooms because that's their space. Mm -hmm. That's not what, that's not what a grandparents want to do. They want to be down or, or just a father or something wants to be down in their own space. They have their own kitchen, they have their own living room or bedroom, living room, because it may only be a studio but something that's their own, that they can shut the door and be yep. by themselves with all the facilities, not just the bedroom. So that, that was that was one thing that I heard, but- um, So you, you, know, you, I, uh, I, you would say special permit? I Yeah, I would say special permit. We get to look okay. at everything. Jeremiah, what say you? Well, I guess as a point of clarification, um, uh, I mean, I, I'm leaning towards by right, but just under the understanding that even if it's by right, you have to meet all the requirements. Sure, there's so some rules. I, yeah, sure. Yeah, so I'm not sure that uh, what would be what would be the purposes of that extra review on top of them complying with the the rules that the building inspector would be reviewing and and deciding on their own merit if, if they're met. Um, 
I mean, yeah, so all right. Okay, that's a good point. Dave? My, my, I think what I interpret Jerry's opinion that he, he'd prefer if it's, um, if it is by special permit, the by right problem with him is it puts a lot on that one person to be the, the arbiter of what will be accepted. Um, and it spreads out a little bit of the responsibility to a, you know, a larger body. He's, he's a pretty busy guy as it is. And so he's got, there's a lot of, especially if the, if the bylaw has a lot of uh, points to it or requirements, there's a lot of stuff for him to go through aside from just the general, um, you know, building code. So I think that's why the special permit makes a lot of sense. And in this case, I would say, it, preferably it would be the CPC and not the ZBA, um, but that would be my vote. Well, I, do I, don't think the, I don't think the ZBA is going to be involved. The, the only, so, so um, okay, so, so, well, let me just, uh, let me just go back. So now I have two special permit and one by right. So, um, and unfortunately, I'm in agreement with Jeremiah. <laughs> um, Where's Ryan when you need him? <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. And um, so, so okay, well, well, that's okay. We're just going to get this out here. We're just going to get it out here on the floor, and then we'll see what we do with it. So, so, um, so my, my, uh, my reason for, for by right is if we make it a special permit, and we um, go through the whole process, it can be, it's appealable to the Board of Appeals, which I suppose the building inspector's decision would be also, but, but I'm, um, um uh, to Jeremiah's point, if we make it by right with some very specific set of conditions that allow it by right, essentially you're doing the same thing as, as you know, as a special permit to some extent. But, but, uh, but what I see that doing is making it very uh, attractive to the people that want it to come in and pull all the proper permits. That's what I see the by right doing. And I think Jerry sees that too, which is why he was talked about by right in the beginning. So um, again, the conditions, so so um, does anybody want to change their, their position based on that or does everybody still want to? Well, yeah. One of the reasons why I thought special permit, Warren, is that it, it with a special permit, you do have to have public input. Yeah. Um, you know, there can you be, go very quickly so yeah. if someone has a real problem yeah they can they can you know talk about it right away with if it's if it's by right it's a building permit if you don't catch the building permit within 30 days it's done it's a done deal yeah. you can never change it and and it's only one person making that that decision which is something david did say which which i i you know it's tough it, it makes it a little I think it makes it a little easier. I don't think the zoning board is the right place to go with it. We do a lot of this building stuff at the CPC where we've mm -hmm. got a better handle on knowing uh, all the things that are needed to, to, to build and support a house. Um, not that mm -hmm. the ZBA doesn't either, but we, you, we opine on those more often, I think. And then that lets them be the, the appeal body, um, mm -hmm. which keeps it within town, um, which makes yep. it easier for someone. So, but, the, the special permit thing is is more so that you know we could be done in a night mm -hmm. just like anything else but yep. the neighbors get to put their inputs in and the people doing it should be there not just like a lawyer or something yeah, yeah. so that they hear what the problems could be what the concerns so my, are for the neighborhood so my my concern with with that though is that you um you would draw neighborhood politics into a situation where people would are doing something inside their existing home and you're letting the neighbors tell them what they can do inside their existing home. Is that what I'm hearing? I mean, I, how, how, if, how do you, how do you get that out of, I don't know. Because, because uh, if our bylaw requires that, no, no external, no, no uh, detached buildings in that. They, what, they, what they're going to do is it has to be done within the existing dwelling. Then um, I don't. We, this allows additions too, right? By 
by well, you can do additions regardless. We got you can put an addition. That's for what I'm saying. You, you can build you can build a, an attached apartment. So again, it, it's it's not just well, you can put that. You know, you can we're going to create this little bedroom out of our existing house right now. We're we're trying to kind of like downplay what this is. It's it's a lot more. It allows additions as long as everything's attached. It allows a lot more. So I don't well, think that's it's true. Not, it's a bad. It's not a bad thing to let the neighbors see because the neighbors can speak to more what conditions they're experiencing, especially next door neighbors. They're seeing cars all over the lot, all over the yard. They're not parking and in, in, you know, they're out on the road. I mean, you get well, no, it doesn't, that, now, that you, Jerry you will this, never get. You, you, you made get the context. statement that it allows additions, but it does not necessarily allows additions. They still have to meet the zoning requirements. <clears throat> in, other words, in other words, if this was a by right situation, I'm not going to argue with you, Mr. Chairman, about whether it should, be, like, I'm not going to argue with you about what my opinion is. I gave it to you. That's, yeah, okay. that's what I think. Okay. Well, my, well, my point was simply going to be that they could put an addition on for a gray room or for anything they wanted to put a, an addition on for, and whatever that, whatever use they put it to, um, you know, has so to let's be. let's not have an ADU bylaw. You keep coming back to, you keep circling back to your point, your, the point I'm making. And why do an ADU bylaw? And just allow them by right? <laughs> no. I'm, what's stopping them from doing them now? If you just said they could throw in an addition, make a family room, do whatever they want. Like, again, these are permits. As long as they meet the zoning permits. bylaw, as long as they meet the zoning bylaw, then uh, you could go pull that building permit for the additional room if that's what you're going to do. And if you're not converting a space that already Your exists. Yeah, throw a kitchen in, do whatever you want. Well, I mean, you could you could pull a permit for that building for for that uh, through with the uh, build with the building inspector, and you don't need to have anybody any hearing. You don't have to ask the neighbors. You don't have to ask anybody. You could just say, yeah, okay, you can do that right now. You don't. Yeah, the need building a inspector will say, does it meet the zoning bylaw? Do you, does it meet the setbacks? And if the answer to all that is yes. <laughs> Then you get your building permit, regardless of whether the neighbors like it or not. And regardless if you have a, an ADU bylaw. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, Jeremiah. There, there's something fundamental about this that is really um, upsetting to me is that this is already so restrictive. You know, if, if there's rules on parking, if there's rules on meters, if there's rules on setbacks, if there's rules on septic, there's all these things. And if we're able to go so far as to say, it's limited to one bedroom. And I still have to ask my neighbors for permission for this. Well, Why am I a property owner? Is yeah. that, but can I just back up guys? Cause I think you're starting to misrepresent what the CPC does and what everyone else does. When people show up on a Zoom call or for a meeting, they do not decide whether what we decide, they give their feedback, that's all. It, it's germane to the point, they might say, they, they, there's already people living in a garage next door, this, if they're doing this, context does matter. So having these meetings sometimes does help. It's, they're not the ones deciding, quote unquote, Jeremiah, they're the ones just giving us the, the board that has no idea about this place where it is, we're, we're not neighbors to this house or this applicant. And sometimes it's not a bad idea to have a couple people. We're gonna take that and measure that point they make against what else other information we're seeing or hearing and make a decision. We do that on everything that gets brought to us. So it's not- But if we, have, not if we have people whose that. job is to review the technicalities of these rules, it makes you mean, a, you mean a fundamental guy? fairness. You well, mean one that's guy. what his job is. That's what his job well, is. Well, I'm just saying- you're, you're if, just if we need, if we need more inspectors, then we need more inspectors. But I don't like the idea that if I, need, if I want to create housing for my in-laws, I have to suddenly go around asking permission from a bunch of people, you don't, Jeremiah. whether that's my I neighbors, don't whether that's right the now. CPC. Just talk to Jerry. As Jerry says, there's nothing stopping you from doing it. You can do well, it right we, now, Jeremiah. Then we may share the same perspective of what's the purpose of this. Exactly. Because because to me, if, the, if, if there are other things preventing him from doing the level of inspections that he needs to keep the community safe, why do we, why are we even go go down this road of such a limited, limited perspective. And also too, we've got the thing you know, from the fire department. If you've got, if you want to keep your family safe, 
you sign up for the community connect and you let them know how many people are living there, where they live in the house. The so public, public safety part of this can be addressed through other things. So yeah, to me, it's, a, it's is a very uncomfortable from a property owner perspective. That's my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't want people telling me what I can and can't do. And that's clearly the, the position of the Massachusetts general law and the state uh, inspector, which Jerry conferred with. So that's why I, I ask why are we why are we even bothering if none of it's enforceable? Well, I think that Jerry's request in the, in the beginning um, was, and, and again, there were two paths and the Jerry's request in the beginning was to give him something to hang his hat on so that they, or, or to make it possible for people to do this with a, within a level of legality, with, with a, without fear, so they would actually tell him everything, what they're actually doing right up front and get it properly inspected. And the other one was that, again, going back a number of years now with Chris and I, trying to provide some uh, housing for um, in-laws to try to keep family units together. That was part of our concept. So those are the two basic concepts that we we're dealing with. And, 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 and one of them comes from, from the, a, a long time ago and the other one comes from Jerry. So, I mean, if, if we can meet those two in some other way, that's fine. But I think that in order for people to properly, to, to go down there and, and be comfortable pulling all the permits they need to, to properly, uh, to construct the in-laws, I think we need to take the onus off it. We need to make it comfortable for them. And it needs to be done in such a way that the town will vote for it. Because if you think that, 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 that not enough people really are in favor of this, you're never gonna to pass town meeting anyway. But you might find that there's more, more support for it than, than you think. And you, and you might find that, um, that if you go up through places like McIntyre Crossing, that you're gonna find some large percentage of those homes already have this and they'd be quick to raise their hand and vote in favor to make what they have legitimate and maybe even close it off a little more or finish what they started. So, um, so there's a possibility we could do a really good thing here, but I don't think that doing nothing is, is a great answer. I don't think we do anybody a, great, a, just a service um, if we don't, uh, if we just leave it out there and let people do things illegally because they're, because we don't have, they, do, they don't have the right to do it. And so they don't, they hide things, they don't get proper inspections, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's the concern. So if we're willing to let those concerns go, then we can just forget about this ADU bylaw and move on. So what's your pleasure? I mean, I, I'm, um, I, I think that we should, uh, and again, I, again, uh, Along with what Jeremiah said, I think if we make it as uh, by right and 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 put some basic conditions there that that we think protect the neighborhood, uh, then I think we get a chance of making it work. So, and getting cooperation from the builders and the homeowners as well. Mr. Pierce. Yep. So, a couple of points that were made for, you know, what you said. It's all under one roof. It's inside. Well, that is true. So because of that and other things that Jeremiah said, um, you know, it, it does sway me a little bit more into the as, you know, as right, um, instead of coming for a special permit. Um, so, you know, I, I hadn't thought of it that way. I've been thinking of it the other way from the from the beginning that there would be some oversight of of how these were put in, where they were put in and, and things of that nature. But, you know we're telling them to be inside. We're not telling them to be out. They're not going to be able to, to build a detached unit. It's always going to be inside and they have rules to follow. Um, you know, the zoning does the zoning setbacks. I'm always concerned about because they seem to get violated in this town all the time. Um, and I wish, wish they would be held a little tighter. Well, but, they, they um, can't, they can't violate those setbacks. Unless they go to the board of appeals and get permission. Well, that, well that's, to do that's that. what I'm talking. So what there I'm is that because so that's when the neighbors could get involved. 
is if okay. you know i mean so nope. there is there, there is a path you know that if they try to do something that does not fit within the zoning bylaw and with the state building codes they have to go to the board of appeals and now the neighborhood does get involved because now they right. are part of the problem and, and even if but other than that they would they wouldn't right and even if we did it and we couldn't give them a special permit if it if it violated setback they'd have that's to right. go to because we can't we can't we can't that's give right. them you know a variance on that that's so right. so you know you know it, and the more we talk about it and that's why talking about it's a good thing um, the more we talk about it, the more I'm leaning to, you know, uh, you know, of, as right as of right. So, and not having a special permit, we don't need to have to, to, to oversee more things than we need. I mean, on main street, we do it after 2000 square feet. So, you know, we're looking, this is inside a house. It's not even outside. This is in right. inside right. of a, a building. So that's, I, I, I do agree that, you know, I, I really haven't heard of a lot of people contesting things that happen inside houses on building permits. It's usually, right. it's usually the addition of, right. That's when, that's when the, that's when they start getting upset. And, and if the and neighbors didn't back. like, if the neighbors didn't like where an addition was going, but it met the, met all of the zoning bylaws and all of the setbacks, the building inspector was going to give them that building permit, no matter what the neighbors say. That's right. And, and we That's wouldn't right. even be involved. We wouldn't even know. I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter uh, because because yeah. it because it's all totally legal. I mean, they're they're they're, they're meeting the law. They're meeting the setbacks. They're meeting right. the zoning. That's that's all that's required. I do I do have one question about the about the draft to Danielle, if I may, Mister Pierce. Okay. Well, I think the draft is going to get changed a bit after tonight because I. Well, no, I know. I see that look yeah. on her face that says, "Oh, I'm going to have to write this again." <laughs> well, I think I think one of the things would be is to take all the stuff she's changed and get rid of all the red lines and just yeah. give us like basically a clean draft again. But if if you look, Danielle, on um, section four, I think it's section four, um, item item four. Um, I think that's something that the building inspector said you didn't want to do. It, it's got to go with the building, not with the people. If it was a special uh, permit, it would go property. with the building. Not, yeah, with the property, yeah. not with yeah. not with the people. So, and you left that whole section could get that whole uh, section four um, line line four or paragraph four could be taken out because I think that's what that refers to. Yeah. Um, get yeah, would, permission they, they within would, thirty it days. Would, uh, it would run Just with something the property. It's hard mm -hmm. to see with all the red lines you've done. I know it. I'm scrolling down. Um, it's difficult. It's difficult to to make sure you get everything done correctly. Oh, right. actually, no. Number four was part of the model bylaw for um, from Massachusetts, and the reason that's in there is um, just so that it's a it's just so that we know that it's owner occupied and that it's not just being rented out to third parties. That's all. That's for. The one requiring so, um, a notarized yeah, like within the, 30 the, days of the sale. Okay. Um, and that's for the um, owner to state that they're occupying. I do think we should leave that in because I think we have said we want owner occupancy either in the unit or in the main house. Oh, it's yeah. Just, one of the units has something has yeah. to be owner occupied. Okay. Yeah. All so right. that's, that's what that's that. For. Okay. All right. That's what that means. All right. I, I apologize. Okay. So no, that's we can. Okay. Uh, so, so I mean, if we, if we, you know, if we agree that what we would like to do is to make this, uh, to, to some extent, to make this as of as of right, as of right, and um, um, then the then the only other thing we would have to do is is to decide what rules would go with it. For example, uh, do we do we um, um, we can put things like we can limit the parking. Uh, all those things can go into this um, as conditions for the buy right. Um, so I mean that you know. So so then what we would want to do at this point maybe would be if we think we have uh, enough people that would do buy right, then I think that we what we would need to do is to put together some what it is we want for conditions in there. How many yeah. conditions? And um, it, it, if we can make this again again simple enough. And attractive enough so that they come and they pull all their permits and get all their inspections and 
Great. turn all their information into the fire department in the town, I think it's a win. I, would, I wouldn't want to see this made any more difficult than it needs to be, Dave, to tell you the truth. I, I would like to make it as simple as I could. Can I um, type in for a second? When you say limit the parking, um, I heard that before, and I just want to let you know that when you have an in-law apartment, but you also have uh, you know, the main house and you have children, and then your children grow up, and when they turn 16, 17 years old, guess what they get? They get a license. Yes. Then what do they get? They get cars. So when you say limit the parking, you have to take into consideration that the family at some point is going to have more than two cars because you have three kids, you're going to have three more cars. Yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't mean ways. that it doesn't mean okay. because you have an in-law apartment that they have cars over there. It's just a fact. Yeah, I know we have no control over that. So again, so, when we do subdivision, when we do a subdivision. Um, we want there to be enough, especially if the, if it's tight, we need there to be enough off-street parking so that there could be off-street parking for snow removal and so forth. <coughs> well, I can tell you from doing a lot of plowing that that doesn't work. I mean, because you go there, the driveway's full and there's two cars out in the street because there's not enough parking and that's just a normal situation. So, so your point is well taken, but I don't see any way of enforcing it, just like a lot of these other things aren't enforceable, which is which is why we're trying to make some kind of a easy to use bylaw that that um, uh, that gives us the information and the knowledge and the, and the inspections that we need without being onerous. I think that's the thing. Yes, Danielle. So just a question about the parking. Um, one of the things that we had actually put in this bylaw was a requirement that if there was an in-law um, apartment that they be required to have at least one space. Do we not want to do that? I mean, maybe we should just leave it alone if we're if we're concerned about the other direction. Well, I think initially, well, the, the one thing you don't want to do is if they, yeah, and, and again, that, you know, you know, you, you, what are you going to do at parking police? Um, I, I think well, that's should, taken care of because the police can ticket when you can't park on the, on the street, which is in yeah, the wintertime. Yeah, yeah and that's when these really come into effect. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but, but I think that, that I think if we will leave it a condition that they show there's at least one parking spot for the ADU, I think that would be not a bad thing to leave in. Yeah. Um, because, because they'll, you know, they'll be able to show it probably without a problem. And if later on the kids grow up and you get too many more cars, they start on the move, they know better at, right at the outset that they're going to get towed or, or whatever if they don't keep them off the street. So, so that's, you know, that's that. That whole decision gets left up to the homeowners and to the people, not, not to us. But we should say yes, that at least at the inception of the situation, that there is a parking spot for the, uh, for the for that unit. If, if I may, Mr. Pierce. Yes. In the city of Revere, unless they've changed their code since I was there, uh, if you get a building permit, you need to have one and a quarter parking spaces per unit in the building. I added a unit in my three family, made it a four family. I had to have, had to show them that I could park five cars. Yeah. They didn't have to be used all the time, but I had to be able to park five mm -hmm. cars. They, right. yeah, you know, so I would, I would probably suggest leaving that one parking spot for, for it because it is probably not going to be onerous. It probably is not going to be a problem because at the point of time that that's done, there's probably more than adequate parking in the driveway and they can show it and it won't be a problem. And if not, then they'll have to create a little parking spot off to the side on the lawn or something. And, and they can do that as part of their part of what they're doing. But I would imagine that would be very few of them that would need that based on the size of the houses and a lot of the you know, stuff that we already have. So, so I would probably leave that in as one of the conditions. So does anybody else have any comment on that, that condition or think that's okay? So, all right. I imagine it would be tied to number of bedrooms too. You know, yeah. that if we if we decide to limit it to one or two bedrooms, you know. Well, I think that's a one. good. That, I'm glad you brought that up. I think that's the next big question. If everybody's okay with leaving the parking in, the next thing we should do is decide: Do we want to limit it to one bedroom? Are we Are we looking at trying to just because uh, two bedrooms does seem to be. Well, first of all, I think two bedrooms will put quite an undue strain on on 
on enlarging a septic system to carry, uh, you know, what's already there plus two more. Um, so that might, uh, that might uh, be self-defeating. Um, that's what, that's the question to me is where it's like the, if, if, if we acknowledge parking and we acknowledge septic, then do we need to stipulate the room? And, um, especially if we are looking at situations where you could have a caregiver and um, a, family. a senior citizen, then you're two rooms at, at least to accommodate something like that. I mean, we're, we're, we've already limited this so much that it's, it, it's for the very narrow situations where that would be utilized. But again, if we want people to participate, mm -hmm. I, I would hesitate to go down to one bedroom. I think two bedrooms as long as it meets septic requirements and as long as we've got yeah. some off street parking. I, I agree. But no, with you, no bigger than three, I'd be fine with that. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, yeah. does the reading does the reading bylaw have a limit on the number of bedrooms in the ADU? I have to go back and check. I, I don't know. Remember. I was I was working more from Needham and the and the model bylaw because the reading seemed more permissive. Well the Needham one does limit it to one, doesn't it? Um, Needham, I believe, does. I can find, while we're talking, I can find out the answer to that. Um, all right, all right. So, I mean, if so you I, said... I, 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 I agree with you, uh, uh, Jeremiah, that, to, to, that, that, that your point is well taken, Chris. I was gonna, I was gonna say, you know, the, if, you, if you leave it two bedrooms, but you have to conform to, to septic, um, and they can't conform, to, Normally, well, normally the, the, the issue with it, the issue with it becomes this: when you add a bedroom on to an existing situation, you cannot take any variances. It has to be full compliance. And full right. compliance, okay. So what full compliance means that you have to have enough room to put the new system in to handle all the bedrooms, and you must have a reserve area of equal <laughs> size that's been tested and approved. So, yeah. so that takes up a lot of real estate when you start to get into four or five bedrooms, six bedroom septic systems, you're getting into, so, so again, it's gonna be self-limiting. Right, right. That's, that's why, you know, having at least two, you know, having a single bedroom just doesn't make sense. See, the reading by law thing works, works okay because of all the sewer, you know, they don't yeah, have- Yeah, they are on sewer. Yeah, they don't have the septic system issue. So, so, so again, so to, to your point, Jeremiah, you're more likely going to have single bedrooms because of the septic system issue. So, so, so I have no, no quarrel with allowing it to be up to two because I think two is going to be self-limiting. The septic system is going to be limiting it. So yes. The Reading bylaw uh, limits to two bedrooms and the Needham bylaw limits to one bedroom. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So, so again. Yeah, it's on sewer, on septic, I think. Uh, they got sewer. They got some sewer, but I don't think they're all sewer. I think they probably got some septic. So, so, so again, I can see why they would want to limit it to one bedroom if it was septic. But again, um, I think that just allowing it to two bedrooms is not going to. Uh, um, you're still not going to see very many of them because to, because of what 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 the health what the board of health what the um, what that what Title Five is going to require for them to do that will, will, was going to be all encompassing, unless you're in one of the three acre parcels up at uh, you know up uh, um, up in McIntyre or something like that where you got tons of room. But a lot of that room even up there is not good soil, not good stuff. So you still may not be able to do uh, a system big enough. So, hey, Mr. Pierce, do, if I may, do yep. would you uh, think about? Uh, Back in office for a few minutes and take care of our uh, crest. Was it Crestwood or that yeah, subdivision? Yeah, we, we can do that because it's it's now eight thirty. I don't think anybody's out there. I'm not sure though. <laughs> um, that may be waiting for that. Okay, let me go here. Okay, we have a continuation request. I don't know if you wanted to read that, uh, Mr. Hayden. I can read it if you want. First, I, gotta, letter me, I, first I gotta reopen this meeting, this public hearing. Yeah, you do. Right. right. Okay. 
Okay. Now, if you would, please. Mr. Pierce, I have a letter from man and man, uh, PC, uh, Jill man, essentially. Um, on behalf of the petitioner, Jameson Properties LLC petitioner, the undersigned, under underdesigned, hereby requests a continuation of the public hearing to consider the application for approval of a definitive plan for the property located at 39 Chestnut Street and 9 Flint Street as a 13 lot residential subdivision, the subdivision. Design Consultants Incorporated, DCI, has been hired by the Community Planning Commission to review the definitive plans, DCI and ASB. Petitioners Engineer met last week to discuss DCI's comments. ASB anticipates having a full written response, which will include additional traffic information to DCI's next, to DCI next week. To provide DCI with time to review the responses and provide a final response that all of its concerns have been addressed, the undersigned requests a continuance of the public hearing until February 15th, 2022. Thank you for your kind attention to this matter. Matter signed, uh, Jill Mann. Okay, so we also have a motion in there to uh, to. I do. Okay, if you would please. Uh, let me let me just pull it up. Hang one second, yep. please. Take your time. I'm ready, Mr. Oh, Pierce. Yes. Yep. Thirty nine Chestnut Street and nine Flint Street, definitive subdivision. I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to grant the requested extension of time in which to render a decision on the Crest View Estate subdivision. 39 Chestnut Street and 9 Flint Street until March 1st, 2022, and to continue the public hearing to February 1st, uh, February 15th, 2022 at 8 p.m. Okay, I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Okay, seconded uh, by Mr. Redloff. Okay, uh, so I have a motion and a second. So any further discussion, any questions on that? Hearing none, all in favor, well, let's actually have to do a, uh, Mr. Redlaw, how, how say you? Aye. Mr. Hayden? Aye. And Mr. Johnson? Aye. And myself is aye. Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. Um, for the, um, to move that up to the uh, February 15th. Okay, um, now do I have to close? I'm gonna just continue this, uh, this hearing till then. Do we have a, what was the, what was the time on it? Eight, Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, The right. motion included both. All right, yeah. I was, I was make, taking notes on this other thing at the same time here, trying to keep, <laughs> trying to keep up covered. here. I'm trying, oh yeah, you know, you, I know we're recording. That's why you had both still, dates on there, Danielle. I'm trying to move everything. I'm trying to see what I make can do. Make it all work. And I see where I can get with this whole thing. You guys are big. You guys are tough tonight. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, so we're all set with that. Thank you, Chris, uh, for moving that along. Um, so, um, so to to back to to go uh, to to go back with this, what do we what do we think about the bedrooms? I I think let the septic. You know, two, two, or whatever the septic allows. Yeah. No more. Than, I don't think more than two for mm -hmm. an ADU. Personally, it's it's an additional unit. Um, so limited that, to two. Yeah. Dave, what do you think? Sorry, I was on mute. What was the question, Warren? I uh, went. How many bedrooms do you think we should should we limit this to two bedrooms or to one bedroom? And uh, and uh, are limited to two bedrooms and let the septic system uh, situation basically dictate what they can do. Footage limitation is that all you do? You know, you just put a square footage one on it, like like Reading does, um, or do you? Well, no, or... Reading has Reading has a limitation of two bedrooms, and Needham has a limitation of one bedroom. So this has been done both ways. 
the Reading also has a square footage one or no? Well, we, we, uh, we're getting to each one of those at a time. Um, you know, I'm trying to, uh, to report and, uh, and I wouldn't want a million of them, but I do want the important ones, you know, and, and perhaps this is one of the important ones. So uh, it's been suggested that two bedrooms is okay and, and let the ability to, to uh, meet the septic system requirements dictate. What say you? What do you think? I, I don't have an opinion on it. All right. Jeremiah. Uh, yeah, so I mean, in the draft right now, two in there and meet all the other requirements. Why yeah, there not? Are, not right? the, yeah. There are requirements, again, I, I think. You're going to have scenarios. There are requirements for, for bedrooms in the building code, I think. So, yeah. so. so, so that, that could be an issue if, if 900 square feet doesn't accommodate two bedrooms. And if not, I would suggest bumping up the square feet to just that necessary amount to accommodate well, that. If, if I may just give you some sizes my my master bedroom is 14 by 16 that's 224 square feet okay. so you can do you could do three of those plus have a kitchen so you got three huge bedrooms uh two huge bedrooms a living room and a kitchen and you're under 900 square feet okay so i i think 900 square feet is plenty to, to mm -hmm. accommodate two, two bedrooms plus a living room and uh, a kitchen. And a lot of times they put the kitchen and the living room are basically the same room. It's a combo mm -hmm. room, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I think 900 is plenty of room. It's, it's huge, you know? Mm -hmm. I've been in apartments that were two bedrooms that were <laughs> smaller than that. <laughs> All right, um, so I'm, I'm a... I'm, a, I'm okay with the two bedrooms as long as, you know, again, as long as, well, I'm okay with the two, two bedrooms and letting the situation decide because again, to, to, to create a septic system for, if you already got a bed, four bedroom home and you got to go six bedrooms, the, the amount of real estate you'll need to, uh, to, to upgrade the existing system and to have a reserve area for that of equal size could be prohibitive and it may, it may, it may, self-solve basically. So um, so I think I would leave it at that. So so the 900 square feet then, um, is everybody okay with that? I would be. Yeah, Jeremiah? Uh, yeah, especially considering again, if we go back to the caregiver situation, I think you wanna have enough space to be uh, mobility friendly. So if we're dealing yeah, yes. with people in wheelchairs, things like that, yeah. I mean, let's not make it too cramped that it's on, right. you, know, uh, you know, not pleasurable. Right, right. Dave, what do you think? Um, that's, you had the 900 in there. So, I mean, that seems to be a number you see everywhere. Yeah, all right. All right, I'm just trying to find some level of consensus. Not that we're that, not that it, that it, that it, not that it meets total agreement with this. I'm just trying to put some things together and then we'll take a look at them and see if we can make something out of it or if we even want to at that point. And so, where the end definitions, it yeah. says um, attached and then it has kind of, in a way, it doesn't make sense. It, it, an attached can be something within five feet of the primary structure or primary residence. So if we're allowing using the definitions, you're, you're technically could have a detached ADU that's five feet from the building. Or am I interpreting that wrong? Well, hang on, Danielle, go ahead. Yeah, so this is another conversation I'd had with Jerry where he noticed that that, that definition, which was also from the mass um, model bylaw that he didn't think that that belonged in there. So um, in the version that I, talked over with him, we, we took that out. So what I'll do for our next draft is I'll, because I had already edited yours and then I got edits from Jerry, that's why there are the two drafts. I'll just combine everything into one clean copy and I'll delete any definitions that aren't pertinent to this. So any reference to detach, there's no need to define detached if we're not doing it. Um, so I can take that out. But is, and then on the, 
where it says detached, if you have something five feet and beyond, if you just attach a breezeway roof to it, does that make it attached and then compliant? It might. So I think that's why we want to take it out. Like, I don't think we want anything that's five feet away. I think we only want it within. Yeah. So we're going to take that out, Dave. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's right, too. I remember that. We didn't want to, uh, we want to eliminate that. So, um, all right. So, so right now we're, we're talking, we're looking at something potentially, we have a potential a bylaw that would have a, be a by right one, a single car parking, no more than two bedrooms, septic system being the controlling factor and 900 square feet. What else would we like to have in there for conditions that we would, um, you know, that we think it would be important. Well, we've got the rule here on the number of residents. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah, whether or not they're um, family members or not. Or well, not necessarily family member, uh, but just the sheer number. Um, Three, right? right? Yeah. Three. And I think that's an appropriate number if we go yeah. with the two bedroom, because you can imagine an, an older, you know, couple with a caregiver. So I yeah. think that's appropriate. Chris, what do you think of the three? No, that's that's fine. Okay, Dave, three work for you. That's three residents here too. It's three people. Yeah, or? three people. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I mean, if you only have one bedroom, it's kind of a weird number. Or... Well, no, I mean, I, I think I think if there was if there was a, a couple with a caregiver and they had needed. They would have two bedrooms, one for the couple and one for the caregiver. Um, but if that's not possible, then they'd only going to have one bedroom, and, and you probably wouldn't have a a couple with a caregiver. You'd have just a couple, and the caregiver would have to come from the outside. So, so the three is the maximum number of people, but I would assume that would be a three a two bedroom unit but again that that that's a pretty steep in this in, in this in a town that's all septic system that's a pretty steep hill to climb especially if you're starting out with a four bedroom home yeah there's a reason why the you know there's a large lot you know requirement here in north reading a lot of people think that that's somehow restrictive to you know affordable well, housing yeah. or whatever but you need you need land it's and obviously not all the one acre is perfect land for a perk and That's house right. half of the stuff in North Reading is ledge and it's wetlands or it's whatever else so it's yeah. on paper it does seem like a large lot but with septic and the quality of land nowadays it's actually not that big of a lot you can't so. believe what it's had to happen in some places building systems that go around a corner that have a right hand angle on them they get, I mean, I mean, just to find good enough soil to put a basic, and that's an upgrade. Not even if you were trying to do new construction, which is what you end up with if you if you add an, another bedroom, you're, you're you're relegated to new construction standards. So, Rich, you had a point you wanted to make there. I was just going to ask. Um, we already said no detached, which makes a lot of sense. Are you going to allow them to add on to their to their Building. Well, first of all, somebody could decide to add on to their property anytime they want. As long as they can meet all the zoning setbacks and all of the requirements, they have a right to a building permit. If they don't meet those requirements, then the building inspector would, of course, deny them and they would have to go to the Board of Appeals. Yep. That would bring in the whole neighborhood to, to have some kind of a comment on it. So, so if that's a self-solving situation. But what if they wanted to go up and not change their footprint? Well, that, that, that is, once again, as long as they don't violate the zoning or make anything more, more uh, uh, not, if it's non assuming that it's non-conforming right now, and that's why they want to go up, um, as long as it's not more non-conforming when it's done, then that's, that's, again, they could do that without any, uh, um, without any input from anybody as a, as, as right, as a right. However, okay. if they go up, they're still going to want to be doing something uh, if they're going to be adding bedrooms on, if they're adding bedrooms on, they're back into the septic system quagmire again. Okay. Thank you. So, again, it becomes self-solving. Yeah. A lot of this stuff will be self-solving. A lot of it will, the people that might want to do things are going to, going to see that they can't really meet some of these requirements, especially these health requirements, and, and, and they're going to um, abandon their plan. 
or do it on, you know, under the table, which is what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to make this as friendly so that they tell the building inspector what they're doing and get the proper inspections. That's really, I think, one of the, that, I think that's all the Jerry's after. Give them something with some teeth in it or, or with some real rules in it and give them the ability to do it and, and the incentive to do it correctly. That's that's what you want. So okay, so um we have the square footage and we have the, the maximum number of people. Um anything else that we think we need to uh that when the, tonight isn't gonna be the, the you know the the final thing we're going to put something together i'm just going to read it back to you this is where we're at right now take a week think about it any any more input you want to give or if you think of something you can send it off to danielle and we can decide to include it in the uh, in the next in the next draft see if we can't put something together that we can all uh, feel comfortable with i would hate to just you know throw this whole thing away after all this you know absolutely Oh, um, so anything what, else anybody can think of that might be a requirement that we might want? Uh, Danielle, can you, is there anything in, that you can think of that's in the in the Needham bylaw, especially uh, since that seems to be a very restrictive one, actually, that they've asked for that we haven't addressed here? I can comb through it again and just see if there's any provision that we might want to include that they included. Theirs is pretty brief, um, but I'll I'll go back through and I'll see if there's anything more. I'd like us to be pretty brief too, and and make it and, and make it friendly so that it's friendly to the people and 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 they and they communicate with the building inspector. Yes, Chris. Yeah. Um, Danielle, just, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Rich. Oh, I just happened to do some reading, you know, about this, and uh, one of the big things is the Airbnb restricting it so that you can't do that sort of things because you don't want it just to be a uh, people going in for a weekend in and out, right? Yeah. So, right. So, you know, it's, it's intended to be more long term. It's intended to be owner occupied. It's not intended to be a rental place for Airbnb. That would be terribly disruptive to the community. Yep. Yes, Jerry and I actually talked about language uh, restricting short term rental use, um, which yeah. I think I put into his draft. I'll bring it all together. So it's, yeah, bring it all. it's just too much to, to, and I understand where, you, where it got confusing, Danielle. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so anything else, uh, Vincenzo? Actually, to piggyback on Rich's point, wouldn't we want to restrict all rental, not just short term? That our Well, yeah, the requirement that we, that we well, well, let's talk about, yeah, that's the other one, the requirement that it be a family member. That's in our bylaw, right, that we have. Yeah, but you can still rent from a family. I, I know plenty of family members that charge other family members. And I'm not yes. saying you could even stop it because, you know, you can pay cash, Venmo, but yeah. at least if it's in there and then by some miracle of God, somebody gets caught and we try to enforce it, at least it's in there. I mean, my, my thing is this, that like, I, you know, that just to piggyback on that point, forget about just short term. I mean, I would have to, uh, I understand where you're coming from, but I think I would have to ask for uh, a legal opinion on that because I'm a little uh, unsure as to whether we can dictate the terms under which in-laws, I mean, we can, we can say that we want it to be family members only. We can say that and leave it at that. But as far as, uh, you know, ruling out, um, if we say it's family members and leave it at that, then it's family members. And so, if it's not family members, whether they pay rent or not, I don't care. And I'll just make this family suggestion because I know you said about the most important thing you said, Warren, it's like everything, you know, eventually CPC, then select. I mean, we need to sell this for the town. Yep. Somebody at town meeting will ask, is there any, is there anything in there restricting renting? The second we answer that, mm -hmm. not completely. You have zero. Well, 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 well no, well, no. I mean, uh, the answer to that would be. Let Danielle answer it. She's got her hand up. Go ahead. I can check with town council, but usually um, restricting renting versus owning that type of restriction and tenancy is not allowed in zoning. I, I know there is a difference between short term use 
like number of days of occupancy, but I don't think we can put anything into zoning that says you can't rent out your house or you can't rent out a portion of your house. I will check with town council on that just so that we have a clear answer, but I believe that that's the case. So I don't think we're going to be able to put that in. No, I don't think we can put it either, but I think if we just say, you know, um, um, you know, family members only, you know, I don't care if you're renting to a family member, if it's a family member, it's a family member. I mean, that's kind of, that, that's kind of, uh, uh, how it is, well, how they work it out among the family is, is again, something I think probably really none of our business to some extent. So, um, it, so and, and, and that would, if, if you go there and find out they're renting it out to somebody that's not related, that has no relationship whatsoever to it, I mean, I guess you could question that, but I'm not, but again, we don't have rental police, we don't have ADU police, so uh, it, there's going to be a certain amount of trust that has to go into each one of these, and that's how it's going to go. I mean, I guess you could look at the other towns and see how they've made out. Yes, Jeremy. Dave, Dave had a point first. Dave, you had a comment you wanted to make? No, I, I was just saying I agree with Danielle. I've, I've heard the same about the rental. You can't restrict that. Right, and I agree. But short-term, but short-term, short you can. Yeah. Okay, Jeremiah. Yeah, so, I mean, short-term makes total sense, but, I mean, we've got to think about this in practicality. So, you know, if somebody is going to be developing one of these on their property and meeting all these rules and it's going to be a family member, you know, there's going to be some quid pro quo within yeah. the family to sure. finance these things. And that is yeah. rent for all practical yeah. purposes. That's so right. if you've got your parents who are receiving a pension or whatever kind of investments and they're helping offset the cost for the family, that's rent. So yeah. I, I, I'd be very uncomfortable trying to limit that. No, I don't think right. we're going to. I think we're going to leave it, it. I think we're just going to leave it as family members only and let them work out the, the finances within the family, none of our business. Right. And there is there is tax, tax implications in the state of Massachusetts that goes towards the renter. Yeah, they, but that's for them to work out. That's not our right. business. No, no, no. Right. That, right. What I'm it's saying not, is you don't you want to get into right. that at all. Right. It's just no, I silly don't things. To. No. no. <laughs> I understand Vincenzo's point, but if we have a good legal opinion of why, if someone asks the question, is to answer the question. Sure, and we can answer that question easily. Answering that, that's a good point to bring up, Vincenzo. Having that answer there is good. Yep. Yeah. And, and it, go ahead, Vincenzo. I'm just saying, and again, right, I'm only one. I know Mr. Wallen is also joining us. However, once the CPC decides on something and then there's a discussion with the select board, I can tell you that the answer is going to have to be a lot better than, well, the lawyer said we can't do that. Oh, that is just not, my, that is just my suggestion that. Okay. No, my answer is going to be that it's restricted to a, to a, a relative. Okay. And I understand, but I'm just, I'm trying to forecast. I am trying to forecast politically Mm -hmm. And seeing the way things have been voted on in this town, <laughs> in my opinion, only as one of five, I can tell you that these, from what I've seen in meetings when it's come to this, here's what someone's going to say. This is an end around to multifamily housing. It's going to go down a town meeting. That is my opinion. So I'm just saying that telling people at town meeting that this is good because you can bring your mom and your dad and your aunt and we're going to do the honor system on family members. See, this is where pragmatism needs to come in. So I'm, that is just, again, as liaison, so I'm going to bring this back to your, the board. Is, do you have a suggestion as to how to... Uh... I, 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 I don't. I, again, okay. that's why I So, so then to... what I would then do then is refer you to the other bylaws from the other towns that uh, that we're using as models to try to to, to work it and see what they've done because no one is going to be able to police this. I I I I agree. I'm and Mr. Pierce, I'm not even giving an opinion on. And I think if you've seen my wording, mm -hmm. I'm not saying what I'm for or what I'm against. I'm just saying yeah. that I'm trying to project out that if it made it to town meeting that and through all the public hearings, which I'm assuming those would exist on something yes. like this, multiple. I think that you'll get the lip service that we wanna help everybody, 
And then by <laughs> some miracle, we get the town meeting and no one has a good answer to, well, what's going to stop my neighbor from renting out his garage for 2200 because he can't afford his house anymore. And that's it. And that's all it takes to the, not this time, but let's talk about it next town meeting. So again, that just, yeah, my, my thoughts. Yeah, sort of like the elderly housing overlay. Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, we're charged with a with a with a with a task. We take the task on. We're doing the we do the best we can with it, and we try to provide the town with the best possible answers we can as a board. That's what we're doing right now. And if it's not good enough and they don't vote for it, it's not because we didn't try to do the best we could. So um, that's that's what we're doing right now. So well, we'll put our best effort in. I'll put my best effort in. And if everybody does the same thing, they'll know that. And then we'll just go, well, let's have to see where it falls. You know, because I think there's something to be, there's, there's, a, there's something good for the town in this. Otherwise we wouldn't be looking at every other town having it but us. You know, there's a reason for it. So Rich, you had a comment? Well, just uh, two. I, I do think this. I've been I've been very public about this. I think the ADUs are very important for our town, and I'm really glad you're taking it on. So, thanks for doing the hard work um, to help drive votes and also to um, make it more palatable for people in town who already have built these units. It'd be good if for chapter two of this discussion, you talk about excuse me an amnesty program for the people who have already done this to try to get them to get on board and get official even if no, they would, that would be automatic i mean i i think if if we i think there's a, a voting block out there that already has these okay and there's a maybe a sizable block and they're gonna and they're gonna see this and, and i've already actually spoken to a couple of people that have them i talked to somebody who was getting ready to build one and and they're like well yeah we're gonna build we're, we're adding on because i came to the house for something else and they got all these flags and everything is dig safe and i'm like you know what are you What are you doing? Oh, we're going to build an in-law. <laughs> like, well, you know, here are some of the here are some of the hills you need to climb. And they're like, oh, we didn't realize we had to do something with septic, or we didn't realize we're going to have to look at, at that and meet zoning and and all that. So, so um, you know, there is this education, but I think there's a voting block out there that's already done it that's going to see this as legitimizing what they've done and allowing them to finish what they started. And and I might think I think you might they might be ver vocal enough and motivated enough to show up at town meeting and push. That's my guess too. Yeah, I think so. So so having a real, you know, an official amnesty program, you know, where they yeah, yeah we can't but we can't put that in the zoning bylaw. No, we don't have which, to. We don't have that, to, Chris. Yeah, I know. We don't have to. Once we make it legal, they can then call and say, okay, right. I'm putting the stove in. And, and I've already got everything else here. And, and the building inspector says, are you pulling a permit? Yeah, I've got to pull a permit for everything now because I can. I can meet all the yep. criteria and I can pull right. a permit. It's all good. So so that's that's kind of um, what will happen, I think. And, and it'll yeah, it, it, and, it's, and it's, it's, not, and it's not these small neighborhoods that are the ones. Everybody thinks that it's the big neighborhoods that are gonna 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 complain, but I think a lot of those big neighborhoods already got them, and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna show up and say, legitimize me right now, you know. And I think that's what's gonna. I think that there's gonna be. A, I don't know how big the block is. I think it's probably a little bigger than you might think. Yeah, it's my guess too. Yeah. So. Okay, so. Um, I'm trying to keep score here <laughs> to see to see where we're at. So any help will be appreciated. Um, uh, I think uh, I think you're pretty well along, Warren. I think we got to have that new draft so we can we can look look it over. And if anybody wants to add stuff to it, I don't think it goes in the draft. It gets put on a a, a, a separate paper on the side, and then we can discuss it at our next meeting bullet for bullet in other words item okay. for item instead of putting it in a draft and cl yeah. cl cluttering up the, the new draft that daniel puts together but we okay so we want to stick with in order to uh to, to vincenzo's point in order to make it at least a battle tool you want to make sure it's re a res uh, um, a relative only that lives in there a relative that the idea is for us to be creating in-laws for, for uh, families to stay together it's a selling point you know as best possible uh, it's always been the relative and a, and a caregiver. 
Yeah, so, well, yeah, real relative or, or and or caregiver, yes. Right. Okay. Okay, let me add that on here. I might consult with you, Danielle, before before you get the next draft all done. I'll review my notes and we'll just see that, make sure we're all on the same page with everything. Okay. Okay, does anybody else think of anything that's important to this particular discussion that we might want to uh, that we might want to include in these uh, in this at least this next draft of what we're trying to do? Are you feeling better about this, Dave? I'm I'm trying to I, I understand all your concerns and I appreciate your your. I just have a lot of concerns. That's all, Warren. You know. Yeah, well, I appreciate you bringing them forward because they are they're legitimate and we yeah. just try to deal the best we can with them. Not trying so, to be an obstructionist, just um, I so, just have a different point of view. Yeah. Yep. So so I, I know you, you, so do you think that we're headed in a good direction by making it by right? I mean, it almost is, uh, uh, accomplishes the goal you were talking about of not having anything at all, as long as we put a few conditions in and make it by right. It, it's, yeah, closer it's, it's, it's closer than what we were started out with, with all the, 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 you know, permitting and all that stuff, you know. I just, I just like to see more things. Um, everything is for the person, the applicant. I'd like to make sure we're putting in more things that protect the neighbor next to that person. Yeah. And, uh, so just trying to be more fair in our, um, you know, understanding when we're drafting this not not everybody in town is going to be on board with it so how do you put in things inside the zoning bylaw that in a way protect that person if if in if in this case if it's by right and um the apartment just goes in without the next door neighbors or anyone knowing about right. it which, is, which will be the so case. i guess if i could give you an answer um um from 30 years of doing this day very rarely, uh, invariably, when we do a subdivision, the people come in and they don't want it. Nobody wants it. Everybody's against it. They have a million reasons, water, drainage, still on streams, you name it. They don't want it. And uh, But as long as the subdivision met all the requirements and they did all the due diligence and did everything it was supposed to do, the subdivision gets built. The next subdivision behind that comes in. All the people in the new subdivision show up. They don't want it. <laughs> yeah. And it goes on and it goes on and on and on and on. I mean, and I I can I can well, tell you that of... all these years, and it's 30 years now, only one subdivision ever came in when where everybody that showed up supported the developer. Once. Well, I don't. I, I think it'd take a little bit more measured view of the one because uh, I've watched plenty of been at plenty of planning board meetings. It's not an opposition typically to the project in its entirety. It's an opposition to or a heads up to the commission or the board of a certain condition that might happen. And in this town has a pretty good track record of some sage people <laughs> predicting exactly what would happen happens. Uh, we One of the groups in front of us right now with hydrology and issues with the water runoff and everything like that. So the opposition from the neighboring group is, if they're gonna clear cut this whole thing, Mr. Chairman, I'm concerned the backyard, my backyard's gonna flood. Well, that particular group was correct. Yeah. Uh, we've seen the group with the high school, correct. So I, I disagree. Most of the people that show up at these meetings aren't against the whole project. They're just trying to raise a flag to the reviewing committee or board that there's going to be a potential problem and most of them are pretty dead nuts on predicting it okay okay so, so, I'm doing the same so thing here okay, okay. well i'm trying to think my way I'm, I'm doing the same thing right here i just i i foresee potential problems with abuse of this and you know that's why i think there just needs to be more restrictions do you think yeah. that the abuse that you see for it would exceed the abuse that's happening now <laughs> i know that's why i mean but what i mean that goes back to my original point when we started well, the, the only meeting. real value to it then is to get the information in that we would like to have for the for safety and so yeah. forth 
But my other my but my other thought was that I was thinking while we were talking is whether or not there was a methodology by which we could do notification, which would address some of your concerns there. In other words, if one of the requirements were the notification similar to what we would do for a, a, a public meeting or something. Yeah, if anything, all it does is just allows that the, the abutter, I guess, in this case, if that's really the only, I think it would only be the re requirement, just the abutter, because again, they're more aware of things going on that would be a potential problem. Yeah. And just like the people that come to the boards and committee, they could go to Jerry and say, Jerry, you know, the only thing I'd ask is you look out for this because they're doing this now, or this is what's been happening the last few years, um, and it would help him. But so here's what I here's what I foresee: if we put that requirement in that they had notified the abutters before they did something that was going to be totally legal, I bet they could bring an attorney down and say you can't do that, and they would be right. So I would say that the only time that you would get the um, uh, ability to do that is if they were doing something that required a variance from zoning or setbacks or something that would require them to go to the Board of Appeals. In which no, case, I, I, in which no, case, Jim, I, go back to Mr. Point. I go back to Mr. Stewart's point is if, if all you can say whether it's for the for or the against is we're not allowed to do that legally. What again? What's the whole point? If you because every everything's always got this, you know, it we're not allowed to do that to to it. So why are we doing that then? If we're not allowed to if we're not allowed to ask, if we're not allowed to say no, if Jerry can has no restrictions on how many bedrooms and 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 kitchens and whatever and you know what's what's the whole point then well i think what we're putting together is something that's a, that's at least a, a roadmap for for somebody to do it and again to 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 uh to put some restrictions in there which i think would be adhered to i mean the majority of people will try to do it right i i, I i'm not of the opinion that the majority of the people are outlaws i'm of the well, opinion that the everyone that's made one are everyone's an outlaw right now and they continue to build them so I, I yeah. disagree with that. And that's because we don't give them, we've not given them the opportunity to do it in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a way that makes it comfortable for them and, and makes it easy for them to get to do everything. Uh, but what I mean uh, is there's nothing, there's no, nothing allowing them to do it right now. And pretty much every single person, there's multiples on our street, my street alone, everyone that wants to do it just does it. So they're not all rule followers, you know. There's no rule followers that are building these right now. Yeah. So well, that's because it, that's because we don't allow it, and so they're looking at they're having to trying to dodge these. But if we could allow it and then put some some uh, some controls on it, so that what they did all you know met some level of some standard, and at the same time gave us the information as well as again all proper inspections. I think that that's a good thing. I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing to do that, to, you know, because your yeah, suggestion is that we continue to let the outlaws do it. If I may, if I may. Yes, Jeremiah. Um, it's not good that people are just doing it. Obviously not. That's what we're trying to, right. uh, to, to, to remedy here. I have a hard time believing that the people who are doing this are doing it for nefarious reasons. They are likely doing it because of usually, as we're trying to address, a family situation. Yeah, yeah. And I go back to my original point that as a property owner, if I'm meeting a, a stringent set of requirements, but I can do that, and I'm doing it because I'm trying to support my family, potentially a somebody in a hospice situation or a declining parent or something like that. And I have to ask my neighbor's permission to take care of my family. Why be a property owner? I just think you keep taking that so out of context, Jeremiah, with all respect, you know, again, you keep saying I have to ask my, my neighbor, like that's a really broad reach of what we're talking about or I'm discussing with Warren. Like I'm not asking for you to get permission and have them sign your permission card. It's 
that's just a gross mis misrepresentation of what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to protect the rest of the residents of this town. And I apologize for doing that, I guess, you know, if it offends you. Well, I'm trying to protect families, trying to take care of their families without yeah, having no one's to stopping them deal with from doing it right now. neighbor issues and stuff like that. They can go do it right now. Well, I'm yeah, just trying right. to get everything on board. Right, but, but, we're not, but board. what I'm saying is, so who am I stopping? By my just wanting to protect the other people in town, who am I stopping from doing exactly what you just explained? Well, just Dave, to... Dave, the thing is, by your own admission, they're doing it without notifying their neighbors already. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I can't... Warren, you keep going back in circles here. You're chasing your tail. I start off with the exact same thing I started with. What's the point if it's all it's legal and Jerry can't enforce anything? Well, I mean, I told you what the what the important points are. The important points are that that every that, that they're far more likely to pull proper permits and they're far more likely to let us know what's going on. In which case, we can let people like the fire department know. I mean, there there are some very strong positives. Also, all that stuff noted, Warren. Uh, he already notes all that stuff, and then and Debbie in and in, 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 uh, in assessment already goes in knowing exactly what because of the building permit. So you're not telling the town anything they don't know. If you talk to Debbie Carbone, she knows where every ADU is. It's all on record. So there's no there's no one's getting pulled anything over. You know the town knows where all these are. They want to charge more in taxes. They technically could, I guess, but I don't think there's an appetite for that but the point is jerry's got all this you know on building permits and no one's just adding a bunch of or adding an addition to their house or whatever without you know jerry finding out and it's, it wouldn't be smart to do for insurance reasons for resale whatever that's their risk if they want to take it but um people are building to they're building to the code they're building with building permits there's nothing illegal going on and when they want to build an extra kitchen, they're doing it. And Jerry admittedly cannot do a thing about it. But it still doesn't, it still doesn't, it still doesn't solve the problem that you, you're bringing up of, they're not notifying their neighbors. It, if they're neighbors. not notifying their neighbors, what's the point? I mean, you know, you know that, that, that's your, primary thing you said is there's no notification of the neighbors and yet you're okay with the neighbors not being notified now. At well, least if I'm, they, not, I'm, not at for, least, I'm not for any of this stuff. And you know, I you know, it's just gang up on Dave time, but I just no, I happen no, to no. just I just I differ in opinion from the rest of you. I apologize no. if that offends you, but I'm allowed my opinion. No, it doesn't offend me at all. Um, I'm I'm looking for consent. I'm looking for consensus. I'm looking to see what we can do to make you you comfortable with with this with this uh, project with this situation. I mean, that's generally what we try to do is get everybody on board. I like a unanimous. I mean, you don't always you know ask Vincenzo. You don't always get a unanimous vote. So. Um, right. That, so and you, I you, might be a not, you know, and I won't vote for it. But as long as the majority wants it, that's I can sleep at night, and everyone else can. <laughs> can as well. Okay. Well, if we don't have anything else that we're going to add into it at this point, then I think the next thing to do is to uh, let us uh, let Danielle get this back into some kind of form, and then we'll take another look at it and uh, and see what we want to do with it. So. Um, I don't think that Dave that there's any way to require I don't think there's any legal way to require notification of the neighbors of something that somebody's doing in their private home. I, I don't think that there's a legal leg to stand on there. Unless you can think of some way. Because I think no, that, 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 no, it appears there's no legal way to stop any of the points that you've made. You know, any of the bullets on the on the bylaw either. Well, the only you know, again, the only thing that the only thing is, if somebody walks into town hall and wants to do it, if they know that it's allowed, okay. So now they walk into town the town hall knowing what they want to do is an allowed thing, and they say, okay, what what are the rules? What are the restrictions that I have to follow? And you give them a set of rules they're most likely going to follow those rules. They're going to limit it to, to those things that they're limited to. 
and they're gonna because because it, it, they know that there's no brick wall in front of them. They they're allowed to do it. They're allowed to do this with their own property, and they're you know and and I and you're gonna get cooperation from them that you're not getting now. I, that's that's the value. The value is to is to begin to have some control over it and to get a look at everything and to properly inspect everything and you know and then perhaps also one of the big selling points which you which got brought up which I hadn't thought of before is that they would then be properly taxed as well. That would well, be a not really, you know they're not they're not being taxed that way now. It's just you know basically it's the square footage kind of thing and. You know, based on what Perhaps. you said, you know. I'd have to see what the I'd have I mean, to they see. Add on, they add on to the house. That. Yeah, technically they add on to the house. Absolutely, it's bigger and all that. So. Yeah, yeah. So there could be a possibility of, of something there, but but um, again, that's not the intent of it. The intent is to is to right. try to legitimize these things and get proper inspections and proper permits and and uh, have everything looked at. That that's that's the issue. And, and I mean, I understand, believe me, we go out of our way to notify, even when we don't need to, when we have an ADAR, we do courtesy notifications, not even, not required, but we do it anyway. So we're definitely all about that, the notification of the, of the neighbors and the people in there, you know, so that, you know, you know, on a regular basis. In this case, though, I don't know that we have the, that I don't know that we can mandate that. I don't know that we could legally mandate that. You, Danielle might have to would have to look into that perhaps. So I mean, much as I would like to say, okay, we'll just put a little thing in saying you got to notify the neighbors on either side, but I don't know that that's legit. <laughs> so yes, Rich. Yeah, just a quick question on that. With Danielle's research, have you found any other towns that have said anything like that? Has anyone no. said anything? I read through the two bylaws that we did. It did none of that's in there. Yeah, my guess is the <laughs> problem. The way to get a notification out is to make it a special permit process. That's, yeah. and that way there's a hearing and that way neighbors are notified. Otherwise, one of the reasons to have something by right is if you don't want to do a neighborhood notification process, because you can't send people in to talk to the town hall. It's, right. it's you want to send people to a public hearing where they can yeah. discuss it with the board. So the, uh, the whole, um, I mean, so the whole idea by getting rid of the special permit and going with the by right is to make it, you know, so that they don't have that 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 hill to climb in front of them. They don't have that that stigma that this is a, a big heavy duty permit to get to go through. I mean, and if they're doing it anyway, I mean, to, to give them some direction and to get some cooperation has a value to it. And I think that's what we're, I think that's what we're trying to get. I mean, if there was a possible way, Dave, uh, and I can't think in the past of, of all the things we've done that we've ever been able to do anything like that and I don't think you can legally so I don't know how you would do that so yes Vincenzo I have a quick uh, question because again I'm trying to take a lot of notes for you know yep um, which I learned whenever I don't write anything down then I go to give an update to the board and for a lot of those meetings thank God Rich was on them too because then I, I thought I was going to remember everything Mm -hmm. um so a question i have about the special permit uh versus the the right would the special permit be useful and let me give you a hypothetical where i'm sitting right now my basement i could make a corridor where i could literally cut this out from the rest of the house now with special permit my neighbor would be able to tell you i think vincenzo's full of it and I think he's renting that out. And I don't think it's a family member, meaning there was a, you know, there's like, because you would then ask me, all right, you know, Vincenzo, it seems that what you're doing is you're making, you're literally putting up a wall in your basement. And now you have a door going into your basement from the garage and a door going into the upstairs. And you would probably say, okay, fine. You're allowed to do that based on the bylaw. Tell me more about it. So my question is, is it fair to say that through special permit, right, or the lack thereof, like without special permit, we're actually in, we're going out of our way to make sure there's not notification. And more importantly, do we think by special permit that it would be easier to catch people that were maybe doing things that they shouldn't? And I will give you an example. I'm not going to out anyone tonight. <laughs> I know two people that run landscaping companies. 
that if I told you how many people they have living in certain properties in North Reading, mm -hmm. this thing would never get talked about again. Yeah, yeah. So, and so, I can tell you, but hold on, this will come out at town meeting if this is not drawn up correctly. And then it will be a whole other storm that we're dealing with. So that's why I think the special permit, for my opinion, when I go back to the full board and they ask my opinion and we talk about it, if we do, when it gets to that point, if it that gets to that point, that's what I'm going to, I'm just trying to get research on that. I think the special permit would allow for some of those things to, you know, to, uh, how do you say, like, you know, when you, you can flush something out when somebody, you know, the lies catch up on them. And also I think if someone does have a special permit and it has to come in front of you, it's a lot, you got to be a certain type of person to straight out, go to a public hearing and lie through your teeth to five elected officials. And there's not many people who can do that. So that's why I think a special permit, yes, it would add a level because I can tell you this too. My mom and dad, one of them's not going to live forever. So they'll probably get pulled into wherever I am. But I can tell you, if I came in front of this board, I'd have her right next to me and be like, hey, meet Ma, meet my, her apartment. <laughs> Thank you for playing. But if yeah. I was doing something shady, oh, would I love the fact that I could just do it and just because I pulled a permit and, and unless my neighbor notices, which I can tell you, I can hide anything for 30 days. And so can most people. Thank you, Mr. Hayden. I didn't know that, that after 30 days, I'm you're stuck. So again, I'm just saying that I think that special permit would add an extra incentive at town meeting to say, hey, we're going to have a process to flush out anybody that's going to get cute with this. So I'm just saying, I don't, I don't, because that's what I'm, you know, yeah. I don't think that this, I don't think that it would work that way at all, Vincenzo. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I can see where you're, where you're coming from, but um, I, I don't see people. I think the majority of the people that are trying to do this are trying to do this as a family situation. Um, and, 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 um, and, and I don't think that, I think they're putting that the special permit thing. They're not going to tell you. They don't. They may not even have anybody in the place. They could be just prepping it for a family member. You know, I mean, you don't. Uh, I, I think it's too much of a stretch to think that you were going to catch people in the act of doing things by doing it a special permit. I think you're more likely to push people back uh, um, behind the door or under the rug so they so they don't tell you what's going on because they don't want to have to deal with the issues of the special permit. So the buy right thing is open. It's open. You walk in. You have the right to do this. Here, here are here are the things. Here are the the, the few requirements that we have. That, that while you do it, it's, they're simple. They're straightforward. Most of them you need anyway. You need a place to park a car for the person that's going to be there. You know, and we don't want too many people. And you have to deal with the septic issue. You know, so so I think those things are all going to be self-solving. Um, um, but only if we get a chance to talk to how many of these people that have put these um, in-laws in have actually improved their septic system. Probably none. I mean, they're just, they're not doing it because they don't, there's no, they, don't, they may not even know they have to because there's no information tra getting traveling back and forth. And what would happen by this says, right, is they could be willingly to, to, to do these permits and get things done right and be told about this. Is the Board of Health being informed every time one of these ADUs comes in? Because that's right now, that's where your that's where the teeth are. If 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 every single one of these people things that Jerry has for where he sees them putting in what appears to be an ADU, if he turned it over to the Board of Health and they went out there and said, listen, you're in the bedroom and you can't do that, you you I mean there's your there's your stopping point right there. So um so if that's not being done, then I don't I don't know what to tell you. I mean, there's a there's a flaw or a failure in downtown. You see what I mean? Yeah, and again, I'm just trying to get as much info as possible. And well, there's uh, a big piece of information for you to add. There's a big question to ask. You know, if 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 if, if, they, if it's being done regardless of what we do, where's the breakdown? And if Jerry knows about every single one of them, and and the, and the uh, assessor knows about every single one of them, where's the breakdown? Where are we losing it? I mean, so again, by right, encourage them to come in, explain everything to them, get them to do it right. 
It's a big plus for the town. It prevents a headache for these people later on when the system fails because they didn't realize that it was going to overtax it. There's a lot of advantages to having this done. And I think by right is, is the way to do it. So, so I, I think this is, you know, I don't want to get into what's wrong now. I mean, I mean, keep that. No, they keep bringing it up. They're doing it now. They're doing it now. But they shouldn't be. And why are they getting away with it? I didn't get, want to get into that. I'd rather, rather than look back, I'd rather look forward and try to put something together to make it easy enough for people to do and do it right. And that's that's the way I would present this. So, any tomorrow, last thoughts? You know, by by just like the sun's going to come up tomorrow when there's a public hearing about this, we'll get all kinds of colorful opinions. <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, is somebody going to ask the hard question, <laughs> or are they going to leave that up to us to ask the hard question? I didn't want to ask the hard question. But it is one that should be asked and should have been asked perhaps a long time ago. It would certainly encourage people to follow the rules that we will put for, we would put forth. So I mean, we'll see how that works. So any last thoughts from anybody before we uh, before we close this out? I, I, I appreciate everybody's time tonight. Dave, don't think you're not appreciated. You are. Um, that that you know you're you're you know I do take your input very seriously, and you you've been you've been. You know, of everybody, you've been really go, moving forward on it. You've been trying to find things out. You've been working at it. So, and that doesn't always happen. So I do appreciate that. Don't think I don't. Um, I just like to get something together. And I hope you see my point too, that I'm really trying to do a good thing here, not create a problem for, for anybody. So any last thoughts from anybody? Okay. Well, uh, do we have anything else we need tonight, Danielle? Or is that unless you have anything particular in planning administrator update? I just have two updates I wanted to give you. Um, one okay. is that um, so I have been spending a fair amount of time um, working on the town's response uh, for the 20 Elm Street hearing that was supposed yep. to happen this week. I'm the witness. I'm like the town's one witness. Um, <laughs> that hearing was supposed to happen this week, but it was postponed and I don't know until when, but I'll let you know. Um, apparently it's going to be live broadcast and everyone can watch. So um, that's, I'll let you know oh. when. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's been a lot, um, but I also just wanted to let you know, I did hear unfortunately from some of the neighbors of, from Shailene who live on Nutter Road, um, there, was, there were issues with the runoff over the weekend. Um, I've been in touch with everyone involved, including the property owners and uh, Dave Giangrande, Dave Murray, the other engineer, Luke Roy. Um, and I'm trying to get us together um, a, a, a meeting to, to go to the site and figure out what, what needs to be done. Uh, yeah. Dave Giangrande thinks he, no, he, he has some good ideas for what needs to be done, but he really thinks um, a, a, another walk of the site and some follow-up information from the engineers is needed. So um, yeah. I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. And for the record, I was, you know, with all of the, the solutions that they brought forth, I was not comfortable with it. And I just kept saying, wait till the next rainstorm. You know, I mean, I think they're, I think the original, all the original stuff, the original design work was, was all okay. Uh, yeah, but all of the changes that made that original design has been thrown out the window and we're, and we're now we're trying to play catch up and it's not working. Oh yeah. So, um, so um, I'm probably, I'm probably going to be there out there with her when we, when we, when we go through this again, because there's, there's engineering and then there's what's really happening on the ground that I've spent enough time watching what happens on the ground to know just by looking at that wasn't going to work. I kept bringing these other issues up and they kept saying, oh, no, it's okay, it's okay. It's, yes, it's not okay. So we'll see what happens when we go back out. So if anybody is going to be around and wants to join, um, you can let Do us know. Do we know what it is? I can no, let, I can, I'm still working on scheduling. I um, I'm not sure what works for the engineers, but yeah, I can let I can let you all know. As soon as she lets everybody know, if more than one or two people want to go, make sure you let us know immediately. So post that it. We can post it exactly. Right now, it is going to be on someone's property, so I you know we have to be kind of sensitive to that since it's not really an yeah. open. Uh, 
what should I say, public hearing. Right. You know, I, so I, I will let everyone know when it's scheduled in terms and of- And to a site block, that's all. Yeah, okay, okay. We can I'll do a site walk with four, three or four people. We can definitely do a site walk and it doesn't need to be posted. There just can't be any- There won't know, be any discussion. We'll just look at, we'll just, yeah, we're not gonna deliberate. We'll just all get, I just would like everybody to collect information so that we go back to sit down to make some deliberate deliberations and some decisions. We have everybody on board. You do the you do the site walk and then you go back and have the meeting, or just post it or, to the next meeting, or or wait till the next meeting. But if you want because to do it right away, walk, after the site walk, I I I would assume that after the site walk, that uh, we're going to get some uh, written uh, results of it from Mr. D Jane Grandy. And, and we're going to want to read that before we before we deliberate so that we know if there's a, a reasonable solution or one that we that we do agree with or one that we don't agree with. Yeah. So, um, that's that's I think that's key. So but to deliberate immediately after until the engineers do their work, I would say probably not a good idea. OK. So, yeah. Let's wait till we get everybody's input and then see if we agree that they've properly solved this problem or if we're just still on a bad road. So, okay, is that it, Danielle? Yeah. Okay. Well, again, again, thank you all for for participating tonight. I will. Um, we'll just we'll, we'll work on that. We'll still we'll work on this a little more. See if we can come up with something that's a little that's palatable for everybody. And and uh, and most most definitely, it's going to be uh, as as Vincenzo said, it's going to be difficult. To, it's going to have to be something that's palatable to town meeting. And um, um, we'll have to see how that works out. So thank you, every, thank you very much, everybody, and, uh, and have a good night. All right. Good night. Thank okay. you. Yeah.